Konnichiwa. Welcome back. Guys, today we're going to visit with a YouTuber named Bernie Lowe, and she's going to describe what it's like to be overweight in Japan. Check this out. Like, I'm trying to come to terms with, you know, hey, I am this size. Um, I am trying to not be this size for health reasons. And I still don't like it when I look at myself in the mirror because I think that what I look at in the mirror is just looks horrible, you know. And uh, I, I remember I was watching this video by Rachel and Jun. I, I posted it in the article as well because I... Like, the, the video really spoke to me a lot and I am going to link it here again. Um, it was like, you know, what is chubby in Japan? What do people think is fat in Japan? And uh, there were a lot of comments and some of them were encouraging. Some of them were not so encouraging, but it was really, really nice to see some of the very encouraging comments that people wrote. And it made me feel, you know, slightly better about myself. And I, I have friends who have told, who have, who have constantly, you know, told me things like, can you please stop saying like you're ugly? Stop saying that you're fat and no one will ever love you. Stop saying things like you're going to be forever alone. Stop, you know, hating yourself. Stop being so insecure, you know, be more confident. And uh, people care more about confidence than, you know, than like instead of always like, thinking and second-guessing yourself and how you look like uh so when I when I dress up and go out now you know I'm trying to change my mindset instead of you know dressing up because I want people to like me I am dre I'm dressing because I want me to love me you know I want to dress how I want I want to make myself happy and uh, I am going to wear what I like. I am going to do things for myself, to love myself, to uh, accept myself because this is who I am. This is, uh, I need to love myself because uh, I believe, you know, loving and accepting yourself is the first step to, you know, being able to love and accept others for who they are too as well. And uh, I'm sorry, I was not planning or thinking that I would actually cry or anything during this video. So You can kind of tell by the way she is getting emotional that she's got some, some baggage from the past, right? She probably got teased as a kid. <clears throat> Excuse me. She probably had some family members make some remarks, right? And it's just a real tough deal when you feel like you're the one person in a country, right? Or a people that is kind of like not the norm. Because when you think of a Japanese person, you think of somebody that's very, very slim. Because the reality is, look at her. She looks kind of tiny. I bet here in the States, she would be considered medium, maybe even smallish. And uh, I, I definitely have to admit that even though, you know... Some of my most insecure moments, you know, some of my, some of the times where I just felt the most horrible have been, you know, after coming to Japan and feeling like the environment is so not body positive or accepting. But I have to say that definitely, you know, coming to Japan has also changed my life in very, very good ways. Um... The food here is just a lot healthier than um, what I was eating back in Singapore. And uh, I have been a lot more active now in Japan. I walk a lot more. I have to walk to school. Uh, I have to walk from my house to the station. And uh, I have lost weight in Japan. Oh my God, I wish God would give me a power. I would walk up to every person everyone i would make them walk two hours a day oh my god you guys are so lucky that i'm not i dropped one dress size i think and uh i am for you know the first time like in my life you know i gained muscle mass instead of like fat and you know 
I, I do look at like my pictures and think like, wow, I have changed. You know, my face, my face shape has gotten smaller. It's, it's still big. I'm still big. There's still so many things to work towards, but you know, it has helped. Like my appetite has become a lot smaller. I've become a lot more conscious, you know, about the horrible things I'm putting inside my body. Like I don't like processed foods as much. There have been so many ups and downs that I've gone through just to get to the point where I am now, where I'm able to actually talk about this to people other than, you know, my closest friends. Like, I, I don't want to be one of those girls on TV who went on crash diets. I don't want to lose weight for the sake of, you know, people liking me. I don't want to lose weight because society thinks that I should be really skinny or something. I want to lose weight because I want to do it. I think we can applaud that, right? You should want to do it. But here's the thing. I really hate how it's depressing her. But notice she said something. She's walking more and she really does feel like her appetite has decreased. A lot of times people don't give credence to that. When you become a smaller version of you, you actually crave less food. It's not like it's the opposite. Doctors and, and experts almost make you feel nowadays like it's the opposite. Hey, you're going to get smaller, but you're just going to gain it all right back and then some. It's futile. Just take this prescription drug. The reality is when you get smaller, especially if you can do it in a way that's pleasant, like walking, you can lose so much weight because your appetite shrinks, you get addicted to the walk, and before you know it, you're a new version of you, just like you were when you were in school and you had to walk to class every day. It, it's it's difficult, you know. I do really want to lose... I do want to lose weight. Um, I am... I, I do have this ideal, like, size that I'm supposed to be. I have this idealized, you know, notion of what I should be, you know, what I should look like. This is kind of crazy. I think this kind of shows you where we are as just human beings. I look at both these pictures, and yes, I can tell the one on the left is slightly smaller. Are, are we correct there? Unless I'm totally seeing it wrong. But here's the crazy thing. He's probably seeing something that's a lot smaller than what I'm seeing. I'm seeing two people that look like they're within five or six pounds of each other. What do you, what do you guys see? Let me know. It's, it's also like a part of me also wants to be able to accept me at my current size, you know, to be able to actually look in the mirror and think, yeah, you look beautiful today. You look great. You, you are amazing just being who you are. And uh, it's, still, it's still a long journey um, to be able to actually reach the point where I can actually fully, truthfully say that I do love myself. You should love yourself, Bernie. You are beautiful and you sound like a wonderful human being. Guys, if you want to be the best version of you, you got to go down the path Bernie is, not the sad path where you feel like everybody's staring at you and, and looking at you funny. The path where you start walking more. If you walk more today, you'll feel better about yourself tomorrow. So with that being said, look at your shoes. Let's go for a walk. Good morning, Venters. I woke up uh, about an hour ago, but for some reason I just kind of laid in bed for the past 45 minutes and almost fell back asleep. But I'm awake. I'm awake. You know, sometimes 
something as easy as just wanting to sleep longer can keep us from our morning walk. If that happens, you're human. Sometimes you might even sleep a little too long and have to run off to work without your walk. That's why I always try to urge you guys, if you have a half hour or one hour lunch at your work, why not go ahead and enjoy a walk at your work? You know, if every time you walk it has a positive effect on your mental attitude and outlook, then what would it hurt to start walking at work? Could you imagine the average person probably gains two or three pounds a year because of their lunches at work, right? Imagine if we could reverse that and make it where the average person lost five or 10 pounds a year because they walk at their lunch break. And by the way, in case you're thinking nobody does that, we do have a handful of venters that do do that, including myself from time to time. I have a half hour lunch. I could take an hour, but I always take half an hour. I have a little walk around a certain area of my neighborhood that takes about 12 minutes. I've taken you on that walk before when I do little extra credit runs with you guys. And sometimes that little 12 minute walk is all you need to re-energize yourself. Remember, there's people out there like Mala, Sean, and Lily that are consistently walking every day. A lot of you guys are walking every day. Every time you walk, you feel better. So why not add it to your midday repertoire? The repertoire! I also think that uh, we are starting to have a change of weather because like I said, today feels a lot like yesterday. So check this out. During the hottest part of the day, it's still hitting 107, still hitting 108. I know it sounds unreal, but it does that in Arizona, right? But in the morning, I'm starting to feel little tinges of cool air. So literally, I feel like, I'm, I, like my body is telling me it's becoming fall. And of course, it is. We're almost done with uh, August. Your boy's birthday is the first week of September. I'm going to be 48 in about a week. Holy moly, when I met you guys, I was 47 and a half. Isn't it amazing how quickly six months can go by? Guys, you guys have been a part of my life and I've been a part of yours for six months now. And you wanna know something? We walk every single day, right? Haven't taken one single day off. There are some times where I might show you a video that's a couple days away, right? But I still walk each and every day, I promise you. And uh, yeah, you cannot stop. You cannot stop time. It is just gonna keep on coming and keep on going. That's why I tell you, even if your goal takes you six months to a year, guys, six months happens like the snap of your fingers. It just amazes me. So again, if you're one of these people that thinks six months is gonna take forever or a year or two years is gonna take forever, Man, you've been on this planet for X amount of decades. There's no reason why you can't start today and we can start to really see some results just 60 or 70 days from now. So again, your best bet, morning. Your best bet is not to wait until January when the weather cools down. Put your shoes on and join the venters now. Remember, the walk must go on. I think so many times people are looking for a three-day weekend where they can do some sort of crash diet and lose three, four, five pounds. Hey, look, if you absolutely want to start your walking routine with a crash diet, go for it, you know? But my thinking is whether you do it or not, you still need to walk. I see so many people that just, you know, put on the freshman 15, followed up, up by the sophomore 20, followed up by the junior 25, and before you know it, they're just, they don't look anything like they did when they were in high school, you know? So again, do you, are we all gonna become high school skinny in life? No, but if you wanna lose 15 to 20 pounds, I think you'll be amazed how your body will look when you do lose 15 or 20 pounds. 
You know, when I feel my body, six months ago, I felt like I was made of marshmallows. Does anybody know what I mean when I say that? I literally felt like I had nothing but really soft pudginess. The softness that guys describe to other men that are hitting middle age. We naturally become pudgy, soft, weaker versions of ourself. But I don't feel that way. The other day I told you, I go, there's legitimate mornings where I wake up where I feel 18, 19, 20. I mean, that might have been a little bit of an exaggeration. But what I mean when I say that is, I don't feel like some guy that's, you know, a couple years away from 50. And by the way, when you're 50, you're still very much young, right? But at the same time, if you were to ask 20-year-olds, what do you think of the age 50? A lot of them will associate that with being, you know, middle age, and some of them will even say, hey, that's elderly. Well, you want to know something? If elderly equates to us being just as active as we were when we were in our 20s and 30s, and we can get that simply by a daily walk, then let's do it. We have about two weeks left. I am trying like the Dickens to get as muscular as I can and at the same time still losing weight, or at least still trying to lose weight. That's the goal. So here's the thing. I've been going blind. I haven't weighed myself in quite a few months. Well, not quite a few months, but in quite a few weeks, I should say. And the last time I weighed myself, I weighed in at 166 pounds. I think a couple days later, I weighed in at 167, right? But basically this challenge, I've been mid 160s, and now I'm trying to get a little bit smaller. Not because I have to, I'm happy at this weight completely. But I want to let you guys know that it's one of those things that even if you have an occasional treat, you're still very much capable of losing weight. All right, so here we have a weird stranger and the neighbor's yelling at him. He's messing with the cables. See, isn't that crazy? You got a guy messing with the cables here. Up to no good, they got the neighbor yelling at him. That's what's, that's what's tough when you get strangers in your neighborhood. You have a situation where it's like, what the hell are you doing? So right there, a little drama in the neighborhood. What we just witnessed there is a guy in orange messing with the cables while the neighbor's yelling at him. I think we're gonna start having a lot of that in the future. You know, usually, here's the cool thing about walking. When you're walking, you actually expand your neighborhood. Because normally you care about your neighbor to the left, your neighbor, neighbor to your right, and maybe your neighbor across the street, right? You have three, four, five neighbors that you kind of know when someone's not supposed to be messing around with their stuff. When you walk, you expand your neighborhood. You get to the point where you start to see different things. And you start to realize like, hey, this person is not supposed to be here. Well, is that you being mean, Jesse, and, and judging people? You know, the reality is, if someone was in your backyard, you don't give a crap who they are, who they look like. You want them out of your backyard. And when you have suspicious characters in your neighborhood, and you just walk by willy-nilly and, and just, you know, pretend like you don't see them, you know, sometimes that's not necessarily the best thing. Do I think you should stop and question every stranger in the neighborhood? No. But at the same time, if you see somebody messing with the utility box or a generator or this, that, and the other, you probably owe it to yourself to at least kind of make sure that they're, they're not doing something heinous or, or horrible. I just think it's weird that lady literally just told that guy, you're not with the cable company. You know, sometimes we gotta use our voice like that. You know, why the hell are you messing with my cable box? You're not, you're not a member of Cox Communications. So good for her. You know, it's funny, it's one of those things where we don't really think about it till it affects us. 
But when you have some stranger that's, you know, messing around with your front yard or this, that, and the other, what you really want is that person to leave and you don't, you shouldn't have to explain yourself, you know, but we live in a world where it's like, yeah, listen, you know, normally I don't mess with people and I don't bother people, but you know, he was in my backyard and he was half nude. I mean, at what point do you say, who cares if he's in a suit and tie and who cares what he's doing? If you don't want him on your property, that should be the end of the story. You know, that's the same thing with, uh, sometimes you'll see these situations where vi videos will show policemen going out and all of a sudden they're having an argument with a guy and a lot of times the guy will say, you know, it's my right to be here and I can film and I can do this, that and the other, which I totally agree, right? But here's the problem I have. We already have a situation where when people have emergencies and they call 911 or they call the police, we already have a situation where it takes the police entirely too too long to get to your house and get where you need to be going right or, or or it takes them too long to get where you need them to be i should say and to find out that we got tom dick and harry's that are just trying to make a video go viral by bugging cops and stuff yes are there cops that don't follow the letter of the law to a t yeah i suppose but you got to remember Police officers a lot of times probably have X amount of months and X amount of years training and they're not perfect. They, they're never going to know the laws exactly to the extent of lawyers. And for lawyers to go out with cameras and just bug the shit out of, out of cops, God darn, just makes their life impossible. And then on top of that, they have to deal with these people that call themselves sovereign citizens. You know, what are you doing driving a car on the road if you're a sovereign citizen? Well, you know, this is my right, I'm here, I don't have to pay anything, I don't have to show you any ID, I don't have to do anything. Yeah, I agree, those laws, you know, are there to protect us. But unfortunately, it never protects the good people, because what do good people do? They say, here's my ID, I'm fine, I have nothing to hide, right? It's always these Yahoo lawyers that do all this junk. I'm not a big fan of lawyers. You want to know one of the things that's like the most horrible thing ever? When I go on on different websites, sometimes they'll have a posting. I'm sure you've seen this too, like hernia mesh, right? I had hernia surgery. So all of a sudden I'm going on different websites and all of a sudden little ads will pop up for a hernia mesh lawsuit. I'm sure you guys have seen this, right? On, on different social media. And the hernia mesh lawsuit will show, you know, that, hey, there's a lot of people that had this mesh and it gave them complications. And why don't you join this class action lawsuit where we can win millions of dollars, right? So they end up having thousands of people. They end up winning, you know, maybe a million, a couple million dollars in this class action lawsuit. And then you find out that because there's so many people in on the lawsuit that everybody wins 800 bucks. Meanwhile, the lawyer wins one third of the total. So the lawyer ends up winning 25 million while everybody else wins 800 bucks. And it's like, what a scam. God, the lawyers in this country make things miserable. Oh my God, I've had so many friends that have gone the route, including myself, by the way, that have spent thousands upon thousands of dollars for lawyers I'll never forget one time I paid $1,500 for a retainer. Nothing major, just $1,500, right? The lawyer started calling me once a month. And here's the crazy thing. The lawyer was a friend from, from high school that had become a lawyer. And so anyway, I gave him a $1,500 retainer. This guy and his secretary would call me once a month and keep in mind this is a friend I grew up with so he's just calling me and we are literally just shooting the shit and then during that conversation he would mention you know our situation once or twice and all of a sudden I find out two or three conversations down the line that my $1,500 retainer has been zeroed out and do I want to put another $1,500 in why the hell is my retainer zeroed out? We haven't gone to court or anything. I just had a retainer so that I have the ability 
to use my buddy's services as a lawyer if I ever need them for, you know, whatever the situation is. I don't really want to discuss the situation. It's not a legal thing. It's a business thing. But it was one of those things where basically I was starting a business and I wanted to have a, a lawyer retained just in case there was ever any troubles, right? Anyway, I have these three or four conversations that are basically us reminiscing about high school and shit. And all of a sudden, I, I get this, you know, call and this email, you know, hey, do you want to add $1,500 to your retainer again? So I call him up and I'm like, hey, why is my retainer zeroed out? Well, you know, when me and Becky called you, you know, on the first of each month and had that conversation with you, I mean, my God, I almost wanted to quit my friendship with the guy because it's like, wait a minute, you're telling me that every one of those conversations costed me $300? And we're talking literally a conversation, guys, that was like literally 15 or 20 minutes. Somehow the guy charged me a, a, an hour for it and somehow the hour long charge was, you know, like 500 bucks or whatever. It came out to three or four phone calls for 1500 bucks. I had to tell my buddy, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Reset that retainer. We did not talk about legal issues and don't call me if every time it, I call you or you call, and it was, here's the crazy thing. I didn't even call my lawyer. It's him calling me and then charging me 400 bucks per conversation? Screw you, you're not a buddy of mine. That's what irritates me about the world. I love capitalism, I love the idea of getting ahead in life, but man, some people have a golden ticket. Some people, it's like, man, they just get up out of bed and they make money. And I had lawyers before too. One time, I took my uh, ex to court to get joint custody. I paid my lawyer a $5,000 retainer and he ended up charging me another couple hundred bucks and we didn't even win the case. And, I, and, af, and afterwards, here was the crazy thing, his secretary called and she goes, you know, we were adding up all the hours and, um, you know, we just want you to know that technically there's an extra $600 balance that you owe. I talked to your lawyer. Um, He's willing to waive this if this is something you don't feel right about paying. And I go, well, why would I feel right about paying? He told me that I would win this, that, and the other, and we got skunked. We didn't win nothing. To give you an idea of how sad this lawyer was, not only did he charge me top dollar, because there were cheaper lawyers, believe me, but he was referred to me. So I went with my referral from a buddy. Anyway, this guy actually in court didn't even know my name. He actually called me Jamie Jamazon or some, something weird. Mr. Jamie Jamazon, my client. And it's like, Jesus Christ, you don't even know my name, you know? And then uh, the lawyer, this is no joke. The lawyer started an argument with, of all people, the judge. And the judge looked over at me and I never thought in a million years I would hear this. The judge looked over to me and he goes, sir, you might want to have your counsel, uh, you know, <laughs> you might want to tell your counsel to relax. I've never seen that even on television. I've never ever seen a situation where a judge told a person you might want to have your counsel relax. <laughs> that, I don't even know if that's legal. I don't even know if that's right. All I can tell you is your boys had that situation. This is where I come up with my damned if you do, damned if you don't. Sometimes in life you try to do things the right way and believe me, if you're ever in a spot where you're retaining a lawyer, I know you're trying to do things the right way. You're trying to protect yourself. But how can you protect yourself when there's a good percentage of the lawyers that are literally just looking at you with dollar signs in their eyes, ready to milk you? When I went to the lawyer, he said, I can get you joint custody. Little did I know that in Arizona, when you have joint custody, they still award the mom the overall leadership role in joint custody. You know, so it was just, it was really weird. And then I found out from other friends, why did you get a lawyer with at all? You could have went through the self-service center and got the same result because judges want to grant joint custody and oh, by the way, it's not going to change your child support or anything. Uh, 
And, and if there's a decision to be made, like the child leaving the country or the child doing one sport or another, it still goes to the custodial parent that has the most time. Oh, well, my goal is I'd like for my daughter to play soccer. I don't want her in just dance because her mom makes every decision. I'm her dad, I'd like for her to be in soccer because I played soccer for three years when I was little. And I think to this day, it's given me a lively pair of legs. I wanted my daughter to play soccer because what if she enjoyed it as much as I do? And let's be honest, women's soccer is pretty popular. But to know that my daughter never got a chance to play soccer because of some court case that I lost, that just seems really shitty. And uh, I know things have probably changed in the last, you know, 20 or 30 years. But that's kind of a vent that I have of mine. I wanted my daughter to have a well-rounded childhood where she got to play soccer and softball and different things, you know? When you're in competitive dance, guys, it's just like that show Dance Moms. It takes over your life. Well, here's the problem. I not only had a daughter, I had a son. And when all of a sudden all your extra money is going towards dance classes, that you have zero say in, that's not the coolest thing in the world to do to a human being, you know? And then every single time I had anything go my way in life, it was like I always had an ex that was wanting to take me to court to get a modification on child support. So then one day I had the reverse happen. I had a situation where all of a sudden my finances drained to zero my job situation changed and I had to end up going to, to court to get a modification on the child support order to lower it. And it was a legitimate one. It wasn't like, hey, I'm trying to get out of paying my bill. I'm going to go modify it. I had to go modify it because my job situation made it where instead of making X amount of money, my, my money was literally cut in half. And then literally, I um, this is horrible but this is sometimes what you have to do. I'm at the courthouse ready to do the, the papers to have them served on her, but instead of going to a process server, right, to get them served legally, the person at the court said, you can send me certified mail. It's the same thing, right? So I think, okay, I'm gonna save money and send it certified mail. Well, my, daughter, my, my daughter's mom just basically didn't sign for the package and never opened it. So it ended up being where instead of getting a modification in January of that year, I ended up not being able to get a modification till like November of the following year. So from January to November, I accumulated basically a bunch of back child support. So in addition to getting hit with child support for 18 years, I had to end up paying like another three or four years worth of child support after the fact. Ah. <sighs> Do you want bad things to happen to people? No, not really. But when my ex all of a sudden ballooned up and it looked like she swallowed a beach ball, I hate to say this, but there was a piece of me that was like, you kind of deserve that. <sighs> There's a situation that women have and some guys have it, but I never had it. But some women have it where when they're in their 20s and 30s, some of them are so beautiful that they pretty much get things handed to them on a silver platter. I think we've all met people like this, right? They're so darn gorgeous that they always get the successful guy, they get this, that, and the other, things get handed to them. And that's kind of how our world has been. But if you never get a chance to make a decision in your daughter's life, and your only thing that you're requesting is that she try a season of soccer and softball and other sports, you know, where you can actually go and cheer for their team. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a competitive dance competition, but it's almost like you're in a big giant movie theater with 38 different teams and your daughter's dance troupe, you know, dances for like a combined 10 minutes out of a four hour event. And it's like that, like all the time and they're traveling everywhere. So it's just like, my goodness, in order to be a dance mom or a dance dad, you pretty much have to ignore all the other parts of your family 
you know, that are like your son, you know, who cares if he wants to play football or softball or, or basketball, excuse me, we got to go take care of my daughter's dance. I don't know. I'm really upset about that still. But those are things that we have to deal with. That's why I walk, because I have these old anchored feelings that I'm trying to be detached from. You probably have similar things. Think positive. This too shall pass. We'll see you tomorrow.